Hi, I'm Don McKinney. I've been a glass bead maker for the last 13 years and about 11 of those 13 years I've been using dichroic glass in my beads. A lot of people are having a lot of questions and a lot of confusion about how to properly apply dichroic to a glass bead. And I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that it's typically done today. This is not a uh, glass bead making video as much as it is a demonstration in how to apply dichroic to a bead. Dichroic should be treated in much the same way as you would treat any other precious material. If you've worked before with gold or silver foil, you know that once you apply it to the bead, you have to be careful not to overheat the bead or you'll vaporize the material. So you work out in a cooler part of the flame, further out. And that's typically what you're going to do here with a dichroic. You want to treat it just like it's one of those precious metals. It is a thin coating. It is applied to the glass. And I think a lot of times people apply the glass like they would if they were putting it on with a glass rod. You need to take a little more caution. That's what we're going to do right now. What I'm going to do here first is make a small half inch wide cylinder bead. And I've cut a few strips of dichroic that are cut to match that size. I'm checking now to see if my strip of dichroic is just a little bit wider than the base bead that I'm going to apply it to. That way I can roll the edges down and have a nice finished bead. I'm going to take that strip and pass it through the flame way out in the flame, just keeping my bead warm. I'm heating the clear side of the glass. The dichroic is on the opposite side. I'm going to heat just about an inch and a half to two inches of that strip just until the tip starts to soften. Then I'll touch it to the bead out of the flame, start to roll it on, and then finish rolling it on in the flame just until the strip comes around and meets the other end. Once I meet that end, I'll take it out of the flame, let it harden, and then I'm going to take my rod nippers and I'm going to clip this off right, right where the seam comes together, where the two ends meet. After I do that, I'm going to apply just a little bit of heat to the seam. And with the edge of my tweezers, I'm going to start to flatten that out and smooth it in. Now you can notice that I'm just hitting it with a little bit of heat and then working it with the edge of the tweezers. Now I'm starting to do the edge, the bottom edge, where I want to roll that glass down, get it nice and sealed down against the bead. And once I've done this, I'll do the other end. You just want to take your time on this. Just give it just enough heat to get the glass to move. In this fashion, you'll be in control of what's happening. The bead won't start to get too hot. The edges won't roll up on you. Now I'll start to work this other end. Just in and out of the flame. I'm going to heat the whole body just a little bit and start to roll in that seam. I want to get that nice and smooth. But again, I'm not superheating the bead. I've already got a good core bead made. All I'm doing now is applying the glass to the surface and reshaping that glass. So I heat it just enough to get that glass to move. Now I'm using both a torch mount graphite marver, but I've also got a, a graphite paddle if you don't have a torch mount marver, you can use a paddle, which I'm going to do next. You can use either or, whatever you have. It doesn't make any difference. You'll do the same movements. Give it a little more heat. I like to taper the ends just a little bit. I think it gives it a cleaner finish look. And then I'll work that center line a little bit more. Just to make sure it's nice and smooth. And it's just about done. Just give it a little more attention to the edges. A little more heat to the core. Smooth it out. And then I'll fire polish it. Get the chill marks out. And there's your finished piece. And we'll zoom in here so that you can get a closer look. If you look closely as I spin it, you'll see the seam roll by. It came out pretty good. 
there it goes right there on this next bead I'm going to apply a piece of dichroic that I'm going to take out of my kiln to this bead that I've already made I'm heating a clear glass rod that's what I'm going to use for my punty I'm going to go into my bead annealing kiln and punty up a strip of glass that's heating in there at 1050 degrees at 1050 it heats it enough so that it won't thermal shock when I come to the flame and yet any beads that I put into the kiln also will not be damaged they won't slump or stick together at 1050 now I'm going to heat both sides of this strip this is a fairly thick piece of glass it's a um, ripple with rainbow dichroic I'm going to keep my bead warm don't want it too hot I don't want to deform the bead as I apply this and just as my strip of dichroic starts to bend a little right about there I'll come out of the flame and touch the strip to my bead once it attaches then I'll bring it back into the flame and heat the strip enough so I can wrap it all the way around the bead then I'm going to let that punty cool a little bit and I'll snap it off on the edge of my torch marver you won't be able to see it in this shot but in the next bead I do you'll be able to see it will do a pullback shot so here I'm uh, doing the same thing I did in the first bead I'm heating that seam and working that seam down and we'll talk about the flame a little bit when I first started doing dichroic on beads I was told I needed to have a reduction flame which means that there's more fuel than oxygen and the next person told me I needed an oxidizing flame where there's more oxygen than fuel what I really found out is a neutral flame where you've got a good mix of oxygen and propane will do the exact same thing as long as I work it far enough out in the flame and take my time with it if anything I would rather have a little bit of an oxidizing flame a little more oxygen than not so I'm going to work that seam shut like I did in the past and once the seam is pretty well sealed then I'll start rolling down the edges just in and out of the flame hopefully after you viewed this video you'll uh, feel confident enough to try some of these techniques and then it's practice 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 uh, none of this is picked up overnight you have to practice and try and you may have to watch this video several times to see how little heat I'm actually applying to the areas to lay down the dichroic I'm heating the whole bead and starting to marver the surface so I can start to smooth it out it takes quite a bit longer to smooth in a piece of dichroic that has this much texture to it we'll move in a little bit so you can see how much texture is still standing off the surface of this bead and what you're looking at is dichroic on the surface there is no clear casing over this dichroic at all now if you were doing dichroic that's on black glass this is how you would have to do it you'd have to put the black down against the bead so that the dichroic would be looking out I have a choice when I'm using it on clear but this will show you that you can use the black back dichroic and have it on the surface the next bead we'll do after this one will be the same bead only with a clear casing after I make the bead and get it shaped I'll take a clear rod and encase the entire bead with clear and I'm going to do it in such a way that it won't distort the dichroic that's on the surface as you can see it takes time it takes time and patience and I think that's where most people have a problem is they get moving along and they want to build this bead just like they would build another simple bead and think that they can apply the dichroic and work it in the way they would if they were just adding another color to the bead and there's your finished product dichroic on the surface uncased 
So now on this next one, which will also be the last one, I'm going to go through the same procedure. I'm heating my punty, picking up my strip. I'm going to warm both sides of the strip way out in the flame. I just keep my bead barely warm. And then once my dichroic strip starts to bend a little, I know it's soft enough to attach. And I do the attachment out of the flame so that I have control. I touch it, then bring it back to the flame to roll it on. Bring it around to meet the other end. And then this time you'll be able to see me snap the handle off. I'm going to bring it down to the torch. I'm going to let it cool a little bit. I'll bring it down to the torch. And I'll gently tap it on the graphite marver and snap that handle off. And there's a little excess glass on this wrap so I'm going to heat that excess spot right where it comes around and touches the other attachment part and then I'm going to take my rod nippers and I'm going to clip that excess off. Once I've done that it's back to using a little bit of heat in the tweezers to smooth down that seam. I'll be carrying these uh, beads with me to various shows that we do. So if you see our CBS booth set up somewhere, stop by, say hello, and I can show you these three glass beads that were made in this video. Let's jump ahead a little bit here now and get to the actual encasing of the bead with the clear. I'm going to keep the bead just warm in the flame. I don't want to get the surface of the bead too hot. If I do, when I start to apply the clear to it, it's going to start to deform the uh, surface of the dichroic, and I don't want to do that. I want to keep it the way it is. So I'll just keep the bead warm and apply the clear to it. Now, this is kind of an advanced technique. I'm going to be working the clear glass rod through the edge of the flame and do one continuous feed of clear onto the surface of this bead. I think one of the keys to success here is the, the quality of the product that I'm using. Coatings by Sandberg Dichroic um, has a very good reputation for being able to withstand the heat of the flame or the glory hole. Uh, I do both furnace work, uh, paperweights and glass blowing and lamp working and fusing and this coating holds up to all of the things that I put it through and comes out shining in the end. So if you want a good product you have to start with good materials and I believe CBS makes the the best dichroic that's on the market and I know a lot of other uh, glass artists that would agree with that. Coming to the end of this bead just about got all the clear on there and once I get all the clear on this bead, what I need to do is then just heat it and marver, heat it and marver. Continually do that until I get the shape that I'm looking for. And just about done. And that's the last little bit. Now again, this is just surface heating. You don't want to heat this thing real, real hot. You just want to get it hot enough so you can start to shape that surface. I've decided on this bead that I want to be able to see as much of this dichroic as I possibly can. So I'm going to flatten this bead using my uh, graphite torch marver and a graphite paddle. I'm going to flatten it out. That way I'll be able to see almost 50% of the dichroic on this bead at any given angle. Shape it up a little bit more, make sure it's nice and smooth before I do this final step of flattening it with the paddle. So I'm going to get a fair amount of heat into the surface and then I'll set it right on my torch marver and take my paddle and push down gently 
flip it over once and push down on the other side. A little truing up, fire polishing to get rid of the chill marks, and that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been educational for you. All you need to do now is get to your torch, make some dichroic beads, and have fun. Thanks.